Go ahead, Chad. All right. <clears throat> so we would like to welcome everybody here. Get rid of that awkward pause we got going. We're all just kind of staring at each other. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chad Cox. I'm the principal of Battery Creek High School. Um, this is community meeting number two, formally through Zoom. Um, and so they're going to give us some updates today, give you guys an opportunity. So what we did last time, and it just kind of works best as we go, and it kind of helps us remember, um, as you have questions along the way, um, if you put those in the chat, um, when we get to the end, Ms. Lassard will kind of read those questions. And if it's something that myself or the district folks can answer, um, they will. If not, um, our team that's working on this project, they'll be able to answer those questions. So um, I do want to acknowledge we have several of our district office staff on here today. But in addition to that, um, Colonel Geyer is here. He is our board member that represents Battery Creek High School. Um, so Colonel Geyer's here today, and I know Dr. Rodriguez is going to attend. I haven't scrolled, there's lots of people, so I haven't scrolled down, but our superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez, is also going to attend today. Um, so we're just excited. Um, things are progressing, and we really love what we're seeing so far. So that's me on the right. I have been running, so I look a little bit better. Look at it. See, so that's gone. Um, but... <laughs> Um, Dr. Rodriguez will, will jump on here in a little bit, but we're excited um, and grateful um, to see what gets uh, presented here tonight, and we, we love your feedback. We had great feedback last time um, that we were able to take and capture and give back to um, Jeffrey Carter Cease and what you guys wanted to see in the school, um, and so we stick with our, um, we have a Google form as well that Ms. Lassard is going to put um, in the comment section, she'll put a couple of time. If you don't get to a chat or if you think of something later, just open up that Google form. I mean, it'll be live and we can share that with um, our seats. All right. So, Keith, it's all you, man. I'll be quiet. Yeah. First of all, we want to uh, start out. We've got Todd Cease um, here with us. Want to say a couple of words and, and get us rolling and we'll take it from there and, and, and move on into the uh, project part of the presentation. Right. All right. Thank you, Keith. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. And these uh, tight meetings are really important. So Mr. Cox and Dr. Rodriguez and everyone associated the, the school board at Beaufort County Schools and uh, everyone at uh, Battery Creek High School. We appreciate this opportunity. We're excited uh, about uh, doing the work and transforming Battery Creek. And we really think we have some uh, good ideas to, uh, to really uh, address safety and security uh, throughout the entire campus. The, uh, every space within the existing school will be uh, renovated in some fashion. We'll uh, address some of the educational programs that you guys offer and make sure that you have program specific and appropriate type space to, uh, to offer those programs. Uh, so we'll be touching on, um, you know, various different uh, band and course and Kate building uh, modifications and athletics. So uh, again, we're, we're excited about this opportunity. We think it will truly transform Battery Creek High School facility and uh, look forward to the process and value your input. So as, uh, as Mr. Cox mentioned, uh, please, uh, if you have questions, uh, let us know and we will uh, be able to respond. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Keith and he will walk us through the, uh, the plans. Thank you, Todd and everyone. Just it, it, such an exciting project for all of us. Um, this first, first slide here, we're uh, basically uh, refreshing us all from our schematic design review, but this was a slide that we had in and, and wanted to leave in. It's just a general scope uh, that walks us through all the different components uh, of the project. Um, and then we start with, uh, to, to dive into the project, just the overall site plan. And, and, and this is site plan is, is the basis of what we uh, re reviewed before. We've made some, uh, you know, some adjustments here. Um, I'm gonna walk through it real quickly, but uh, out in front of the school, we've maintained the, the legacy lane, uh, which will be a lit uh, pathway with a center um, uh, area with brick pavers. Uh, for uh, alumni and, and, and all to be celebrated, uh, be lit for pedestrians after dark. Currently, that's a dark area. 
uh, will enhance the front entrance and you'll see that here uh, shortly. Um, everything else we, we maintained, uh, the, 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 the biggest differences that we have here on, on this site plan here is uh, in the previous community meeting, we had the, uh, this, this field house for the football locker rooms training, uh, um, that's home and visitor. Uh, we had that located, trying to grab a mouse here, down at the end of the football field, but with all the utilities coming through that area, it became impossible to fit that building in with all the clearances around the, the footings and all that required. So what that uh, forced us to do was think of a plan B, which actually turned out really good. And that was moving the field house up across from the concessions, which allowed us to create a, a kind of a closed concourse for entering in from the, uh, the entrance into the athletic complex. Uh, and as you can see, um, the, uh, Mouse is getting a little fun. This entire area, considering the athletic complex, which is, is, is completely fenced in. And we've got some fence lines shown here as well, and it encompasses the entire complex, uh, which, which gives a lot of control for ticket sales and also just security during events when you're holding multiple, especially spring events at one time. Another thing that we've done uh, with this. Uh, when we moved the field house was the uh, trying to keep the players and referees separate from the fans. Uh, so we've got some um, sidewalk connectivity, you know, here as well. And then we're looking at an option right now. There's, there's five tennis courts uh, and then we're going to be relocating those. So we put those also within the athletic complex. Most of your schools down there, uh, your high schools based on their size have, we'll have uh, six tennis courts. So we're looking at an option here to, to, to see if we can fit in six tennis courts here. Uh, it's an option that we're looking at, but um, other than that, we've got the- And Keith, I'll, I'll mention that the orientation of the tennis court is now, you know, 22 degrees uh, northwest of true north, which, which is the optimal orientation if you're uh, a tennis player. So uh, that's why the tennis courts are slightly angled uh, off of the orthogonal um, lines that we have going on with that complex. But that was a, a thoughtful approach and uh, it, it's for a reason that, that that's the uh, optimal orientation. And that uh, allow everyone to, to play without the, the sun being in their eyes, uh, no, no matter what time of the day they play. Um, the student parking lot, of course, gets repaved and, and, and uh, I'm trying to find my mouse here, but uh, in new curbing, trees, lighting and, and so forth and connectivity from the, uh, the new addition for athletics and uh, ROTC, we've got the uh, the connection, the visual connection and the pedestrian path we call the dolphin walk all the way down to the front of the tickets. I'm gonna leave this and dwell into, just dive into some of the specifics. Um, if we look at the main school, part of this modernization was, uh, uh, consists basically of the whole school with different variations of scope. And what we've done here, the building addition is shown in light blue uh, and all new buildings on the site plan, as we'll get back to uh, later, will come back up, are all in blue, all new components. One thing we've done here uh, as a new component is we've added a greenhouse for the uh, ag program, uh, which uh, is based off of its new location, which is down in the, um, the, the, the science wing here. Um, and then the rest of the school, what we've done is we've come back and, and Pretty much every corner of the school is being painted. Your darker uh, areas of, of the tan color are the, the areas that are being reconfigured, meaning walls moving and, 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 and vast renovations. Um, so we, we wanted to pop those out to you. And as you can see, that's a, a, a pretty big amount. Um, a few of these areas, I'm just going to start at the front door and walk through. Uh, we've labeled the main areas with the uh, um, with the text here, but uh, as you come in the front door of the school, um, you come in, you go to the, to the right there, we've got the science wing, which will be part of the first phase. 
what you're seeing here are just some brief, this is uh, existing layouts of the signs and that has to deal with the, our software. And as well, at the same time we're doing these presentations was also, we are also transforming into CDs and moving along to, to meet those deadlines. Um, we actually had the, uh, the new science work layouts underway and have met with uh, the school staff to preview those. Uh, and have made some adjustments, uh, but those will be current modern day uh, science labs with uh, uh, just very flexible spaces, unlike the, the, the fixed labs that are laid out now. But the future labs will all be labeled, um, will all be flexible spaces. Uh, physical science, those are the, the, the smaller classrooms here. Those will uh, have their own uh, internal lab spaces so what they won't have to share and, and work things out with uh, uh, chemistry and the other labs to get space. Um, as we come back down the main quarter here, we've got chorus, art, uh, those will be newly created spaces here. Um, our cafeteria, uh, we will follow that slide here in a little bit, but basically um, totally redoing the cafeteria and upgrading it and, and it'll be almost unrecognizable when it's uh, finished. Um, once we come up, I'm going to walk right into this new addition. This is a um, uh, the, the, the weight room uh, fitness center. Uh, we've got wrestling. We've got um, ROTC. Uh, we've got another slide coming up, but we'll look a little bit closer so you can see those plans there. We'll look at that. Um, we come back through down through athletics. Uh, all the locker rooms, your um, training room, sports medicine, all of that will be will be touched and uh, enhanced there to bring it up to modern um, standards. Uh, all of the locker rooms are complete, completely uh, gutted, some expanded, especially the girls. Uh, all, the entire school will be, um, all components will be made ADA compliant, uh, restrooms, accessibility, uh, routes, uh, and so forth. Um, and including the, uh, the, the, the auditorium, we're gonna have to address some issues on there uh, code-wise for ADA compliance. Find my mouse here again. Um, as we come back down the, the student commons here, we hit the admin, the admin area uh, has quite an extensive amount of uh, uh, space reconfiguration on it, uh, starting with the, the main entry uh, reception area. We've included a conference room, flexible space for the, uh, the nurses station and first aid, and then, and then the center core here, uh, which is the, uh, the first aid center now, two uh, fully compliant ADA uh, uh, restrooms, uh, a full shower. Um, it, it's just really worked out well and, and nestled in there. Uh, and then what we've also done is taken the old course room and created a, um, your, your current um, lecture room, which is a tiered seating, uh, three tiers high. Uh, all of the chairs will be uh, built in similar to an auditorium, but they will be outfitted for data uh, and power uh, for your tablets or laptops. You'll, um, and, and that's what you see in your, your modern day schools, your current schools. And so we've outfitted that and then uh, we've also recreated uh, the guidance in. So when you're walking down the main corridor, you're drawn into these spaces. Whereas now when you walk down, it's pretty much just a corridor of doors, but we're opening up some daylight uh, and, and, and inviting you into those spaces. Um, and then once we get um, farther down on the first floor here in the A hall, which is considered the uh, vocational hall, this mouse is killing me. Um, you can see we, we introduced here, we've got a, um, our SPED uh, program. We've, we've coordinated both of those sp uh, spaces, all of our um, special needs spaces with Dr. White so that we can be sure that we have them dialed in and correctly to fit the exact needs of the district uh, and, and, and the needs of this community in this area. Um, and we've really, um, just, just really pull that together with, uh, with the, the district and the staff. And once we get here, we've got digital art and uh, a lot of your, your, your media arts. A lot of those classrooms are outfitted into the uh, vocational wing as well. And then your project lead the way. Uh, and then also we've incorporated uh, 
uh, a dance, and then um, your driver's ed so that you're accessible on the first floor to all of your vehicles. Uh, with that said, we've got um, the Cake Center where we're creating a second culinary arts lab kitchen uh, for, for pastries and baking. Um, that'll be a full, full lab when it's done. Uh, we're doing that whole space, which is currently ag science. And then of course we're addressing the uh, uh, HVAC issues for welding and the welding um, shop up here uh, to get that uh, safe and uh, make it uh, more friendlier to, to be in as well. And looking at adding some, some lockers in there for welding uh, as well. So, uh, but that's the first floor. Hey, Keith, Keith, before we leave that area, I'd also like to point out the, uh, the courtyard and the art patio outside in that area. So we'll definitely uh, modify the existing screen wall that's in place. And uh, really that uh, courtyard area becomes an extension of the learning environment. It's in a, a secured area, but it's a great place for outdoor uh, dining as well as outdoor art projects. Uh, so we're really excited about that too. Some awesome trees on campus and uh, we just think it's a great place for an extension of the learning environment. Yeah, thank you, Todd. And then uh, this view here is just an, an, uh, an closer up view of the, uh, the addition of the Wellness Center, ROTC and Wrestling. And we're, what we're doing is we're utilizing um, all eight of the new racks that the school has. Uh, down the center here is, is a recessed area. Um, I say recessed, in the end it's flushed out. You're surrounded with your rubber weight floor, but in the center here is a turf uh, exercise strip, which uh, we've had success in using as well. Um, we've got uh, these two exterior doors here, we're looking at sectional uh, overhead doors so you have the ability on a nice day to open the room up to the exterior uh, when you're working out. Uh, we've included a, uh, a new athletic laundry here, uh, removed the uh, one that they currently have uh, in the middle of the uh, school between the two gyms and have moved it to an outside wall so that it's safer. Uh, uniform storage right below that and then if we move over to um, the, the wrestling area, we have a dedicated uh, wrestling room now uh, for wrestling, cheer, uh, just those type sports uh, to make that life easier for everyone. And then also included in this addition after programming and going back and forth was uh, to free up, in order to free up the rest of the school, it made more sense for uh, ROTC to be on this corner of the school where they're near their outdoor activities uh, uh, and their, um, where, where they perform and do their, their PT and so forth uh, and the shooting, the range, everything is on this end of the school. So that worked out great for them. And the way that we've laid this, this space out, there's two classrooms. This is a folding partition in the middle and the, the, the two offices. But you can open this up and the lines that you see on the floor are basically, uh, will be striped for indoor, like an indoor range. Currently, uh, ROTC goes into the cafeteria and, and lays out their equipment there on the floor in the cafeteria in the afternoons. This will allow them to be self-contained um, within their spaces on, on bad weather days or, or, or cold days uh, when they want to uh, perform that activity inside. And of course, all their equipment is, is also stored uh, you know, right here within their space. Um, but that, that works out really well. And then from there, we'll move to the second floor. The second floor is all your general classrooms. Uh, and they're divided up into different uh, educational categories and, and, and areas here, as you can see. Uh, that worked out, uh, also worked out uh, really well. All the restrooms, the darker areas that you see are, are most of the restrooms where we're uh, upgrading those to make them fully ADA compliant. Um, and they're pretty much, uh, will be brand new when we, we get them done. Um, new floors, um, ceilings, fixtures, uh, everything in there, uh, fully ADA compliant. Um, and then once we leave the second floor, we'll get into a little bit more detail in a few of the areas. This is the front entrance. We showed this slide before. On the left, you can see the current um, 
front entrance there. We wanted to make it more of an inviting entrance and give it some, uh, some uh, clear identity. So we've enhanced uh, with uh, giving it with the Bahama shutters, the signage. We're gonna change the color of the roof to get rid of the blue uh, and introduce some louvers uh, and just really finished it off and tried to scale it more down to human scale when you're walking in to pull you in. Uh, and we'll add some accent lighting around it as well. Uh, it will, um, will glow from the inside out uh, when it is done with the, the lighting on the new ceiling on the inside so that it glows out. And then the Battery Creek High School there will be lit as well. But that's a really uh, simple change, but a big change image-wise to, uh, to the front of the school. Uh, and are trying to reestablish the, the front there. This is a view of the cafeteria. Top left, you can see what we have now. Uh, under the renovation, uh, we're adding the, uh, the serving line. So we have um, four serving lines and in doing so that had us, forced us to, we have to reconfigure the, uh, a few columns in the structure to make that fit based on the way it was originally um, built. Um, and when we do that, and we look at sprinkling the building, new lighting and, and all that's required in the building and, and so forth, it really gives us the opportunity to just open up the entire space and not worry about putting the ceiling back. We can expose it, paint it out. Uh, these are new just pendant rings that have down light and up light. Um, and then if you notice in the, um, the, the rear there, the, the round columns that you currently have in the cafeteria, uh, those seem to be decorative only. So those will come out as well. That's a, a, a change since the last, uh, uh, community meeting that we held. And then over to the right of this slide that's opened up, that is currently a corridor wall. But once we sprinkle the building, the ratings go away and we can open that up and use it as a, a little bit flexible space. It's still for exiting, but it opens it up to the cafeteria. So once again, once this space is, is finished, it, it's, going to be a completely different area and it's about unrecognizable from what you have today. But this is, we're really excited about this space as well. Um, this is a new slide that we've pulled together. This is standing out in the uh, student parking lot uh, that you have today. And this is just a study that we're working on. Looking back at the uh, extended student entrance uh, and the, uh, the weight room, um, ROTC down on the far right there. We're doing some studies now and trying to work out the grades as well as, uh, uh, and also the, uh, some of the colors and fenestration um, to, uh, to work with the existing building, but also designate this as a, um, as a clear entrance. Um, and then we'll back into some more landscaping as well. But this is a new slide from last, uh, uh, last community uh, meeting, um, but really, really changes the back end of the school here. This slide here is is uh, was all we is of the weight room, and you can see the turf strip down the middle. Um, this was one that we shared on the last uh, meeting, and it has pretty much stayed uh, stayed uh, the, the same as this. Uh, just a great opportunity to open up the space introduce the school colors and uh, really uh, just a great fitness room. Hey, hey Keith, I'll, I'll point out too, those uh, windows on the right are actually um, operable doors. So on nice days, even like last week where it was uh, 75 degrees, you open those uh, doors up and have fresh air uh, in the weight room um, and a, a turf uh, or grass area outside. So again, the opportunity to extend that fitness and training and weight room out to the outdoors, uh, we think will be uh, important in the years to come. And then as we move on toward the, uh, this is also a, a, a new slide studies we're doing, looking at the um, entrance into the athletic complex. And as you can see, the building on the right is the relocated field house from our last meeting. Uh, it just opened up a whole new world of opportunities in creating this concourse. Uh, it's just, we've, we've got between the uh, field house and the concessions building that 
they just flank both sides of it. It's really simple, uh, works great, and it, it's, it's an exciting entrance into the complex. Um, and the, the tickets, uh, you can use them for home and visitor during football season, but in the spring and other sports, when you've got multiple sports going on, uh, you can change them to, uh, to together for either sport you, you, uh, you need, whether it's baseball, softball, soccer, lacrosse. Um, it's something common at, at, at all of our schools that we've noticed and has worked out really well. Um, one thing, too, you'll notice here is in the event of rain, uh, which is, happens from time to time anyway, uh, there's, there's plenty of covered area here for people to get out of the way without being uh, getting soaking wet. And, and for uh, uh, your, your older people or, or anyone with any special needs or anything, uh, you can also, uh, this is basically a drop off where you can, uh, you can hang out under the shelter until it's time to be picked up or someone's going to, you know, get your car. But it, it's just a great entrance and worked out well here. In the foreground, you can see the baseball, football, and the track, and we just kind of faded that in. But we've got uh, uh, the new uh, dugouts with storage and the uh, press boxes and the the scoreboard, uh, scoreboard, you can see it from the concessions window. When you work in a concession, that scoreboard hangs right here on the corner of the track. Uh, it's being relocated as well. Um, this, this view here is um, a, a view, just a front view of the concessions and locker room when you're standing on the, the athletic concourse there. Uh, just a, a slide we, we, we brought over from the last community meeting just to give you an idea of the uh, the front of it. Again, these are your concession windows, uh, your water coolers and all that are required are here. And then uh, we've got wall sconces. So this concourse will have a, 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 a little bit of light to it at night to really enhance it. And also it doubles as your code required, required egress path with uh, your minimum foot candles of lighting as well. So we tried to combine everything and take advantage of it. This is looking in the other direction at the front of the field house or the corn concourse side. And, and another opportunity that this gave us is you'll see um, whenever you go into your athletic complexes or over to other schools, you'll always want a place for your sponsorships. And in those schools, a lot of times you see them in certain areas or in certain parts of the buildings. What this does here is it gives us plenty of, of brick space, brick wall space. Uh, we've got a soldier band of, of, of masonry here, but you've got the entire area here that the, the school can go out, gather sponsors, and have them um, located right at the entrance into the athletic complex. For no matter which sport you're attending, you have to go through and view those at times. So hopefully that will increase the, uh, the donations for the school since they've got such a high visibility um, uh, for the athletic programs. But just wanted to show you there and, and, and point that out because that worked out really well. Here's another view standing at the end of the concourse and, and looking back again, we're still doing some studies and working out some sidewalks, but uh, this would also have your, um, your sponsors along these walls as well, neat organized place. Uh, and this is looking back at the ticket booth, your uh, concessions, your restrooms, uh, of course, the back side of that are your spring sport locker room for baseball and softball. Uh, and, and again, all of our, the, these locker rooms will be flexible for sports. Um, uh, but this just, this just uh, really came together when we relocated the building and just opened up so many different opportunities um, there. Uh, and then this would come back to our uh, overall uh, site plan here. And uh, so you can, what you view now, you can kind of put it together, but this is the athletic concourse here that we're just looking at as well. And again, all of the blue are the new buildings, batting cages, your dugouts, your press box. Press box will be a prefab unit like you're using at Battery Creek. Uh, we'll utilize the same um, just to keep consistency between the schools. Um, uh, you'll have a new turf field. The track will be uh, reading the track. Uh, and on this plan here, we've shown uh, we'll be relocating your uh, track events uh, to this area here. We've, we've got those, and we'll work those in more detail with the uh, 
the athletic department um, in the very near future um, to get those dialed in um, and get those done. But this is uh, shows the entire campus as it relates to each other, your, your, your act, academic uh, building, and then the connectivity through to the athletic complex. And of course the students park right in the middle. So, you know, what an ideal situation. Staff and all the visitors still anchor the front. Um, and then on uh, weekends when you have uh, tournaments or multiple sports going on or a big football night, people can also park in the front of the school um, and, and have connectivity around to the side to get into the front entrance. Um, but just a great uh, uh, the plan we feel has worked out you know, fairly well um, for the district, very functional. And uh, we're just excited to get going, get it finished up and get it going. Uh, we've got a wonderful uh, contract. We're excited about them too. And uh, it's just been a blessing working with the district and um, Tad, the school staff, uh, just a pure team effort um, from the word go. Um, and I believe that might be it. And I apologize if I talked a little fast. Um, but that is, that, that is it. And, and Chad, I'll turn it back over to you. If there's any questions, we can flip back to slides as well um, as needed. Okay. Um, I do have some things uh, a couple of folks have sent me that necessarily put in the chat. Can you go back to the, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit today, Keith. Can you go back to the student entrance? Yeah. So would it be the possibility um, I know that often after practice and games and stuff like that, our students, is there a way to do like an extended covered area out there in, in the event of like rain that, um, so that kids aren't standing in the rain waiting on the ride? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I don't see it on this drawing here, but we would need lighting in that area because that's after games and stuff, that's going to be a primary pickup point from like basketball games and stuff like that. I know there's going to be lighting down throughout the parking lot. But I'm not sure if there's going to be lighting in that area. There will be. And for security as well, Chad, we're working on that with our civil engineer. Um, okay. Civil engineer and, and also electrical at the moment, but, but there will be some bleed over from the parking lot lighting, but they're laying that out now so we can see exactly what we've got. And then we will fill in the difference with this entire area. This this is a current awning that we've shown now, but we can pull this out <clears throat> and, and give more coverage. Uh, and then the lighting will play off of it. And there'll be a little bit more landscaping in there now um, I mean, as well when we're done. Uh, but yes, and we're still studying the colors as well. Um, yeah, that was going to be the last part. Um, one of the things that it, the people have really loved so far, and especially on our staff, has been the, the branding of the whole thing. You know, we've worked hard over the past um, couple of years to really put the Battery Creek brand out there. And I think that that is shown throughout the build. Um, we would just like, I don't know, this part needs to be creaked up a little bit. I don't know how another way to say it, but like, um, you know, like your athletic entrance, even all the other sides, like it screams Battery Creek. Um, and so, and I know that you will, but just keeping that theme on this, on the back side of it, um, I've gotten that feedback from several folks as well. But, you know, one of the things I do want to tell the people that are on here listening is this is where you come in. Um, they really do listen to our feedback and they really do look at, you know, what we say and, and not just what, when I say we, I mean the community. Um, so it's not necessarily my stance all the time. You know, I take them any little bit of feedback and I'll give you an example. Um, they really came and met with my science teachers because that's going to be one of the first areas that we work on. Um, came multiple times, walked through the building with, um, you know, Ms. Katia Gilbert and as, as a representative of the science department, um, answered all their questions. So they've been very helpful. Um, so they really do want your feedback. Um, so we just kind of want to open the floor up now. I mean, and there's some areas that, you know, that are going to have some input in design. For example, you see two areas um, and, uh, one is like the legacy lane that's going to be in the front of the school and then the dolphin walk in the back of the school that we want community input on um, because those are really going to be designed to celebrate the history of Battery Creek. Um, so 
but at this time, if you got, yeah, we haven't had any questions in the chat. Um, but if you do open the chat, Ms. Lestard has put a Google form in there. Um, so you can put your feedback in there and again, we'll share that. Um, but we'll open the floor if we had any questions or comments now that um, anybody would like to add or it, it doesn't have to be a question. If you've got a comment, if you got something that you want to share, if you saw something that you liked or have a need further clarification on, um, this would be the time to speak up and let's you know get it all out there right now. I'm going to keep talking until somebody talks back to me. Do you like what you see? Do you want us to uh, chat, uh, respond to you verbally, Chad, or in the chat box? I'm. I, I, either way, verbally is fine. You're all. You're unmuted, so let's hear what you got. Okay, so I really am impressed by what uh, has been achieved here. Uh, uh, the um, the walkway uh, uh, leading between the two buildings uh, to the sports complex. I really like that. The uniqueness on the slant of the roof sort of gives it a sort of a broadcast type feel. I also thought that your comments about creaking it up, which I've never heard that term before, but I like it, all right? Because they had the BC place other areas, and mm -hmm. this is your first exposure to it and your grand interest. So I totally agree there that um, the more you can creak it up uh, with the BC and other things that are unique to Battery Creek uh, would, would be well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, any other comments? I know most of you and you're very vocal, so I need to hear it now. There are a couple comments in the chat. Can you see them, Mr. Cox? They're not questions, they're just comments. Can you read them? I'm sorry, yes. I can't see that. Um, Ms. Melton said she loves the use of natural light and how open the indoor spaces will feel. Um, Ms. Busby is impressed with the architecture design and the new BC. Um, Mrs. Morgan, I'm assuming this is, there's only one Michelle. Um, love what we see, wondering what is going between the athletic part of the main building and the pool. Will that be green space? That, that will, uh, that will be part of the athletic flexible space. The, the, the Potter, please get on, um, I exhale. What are you on? Ms. Busby, you're on, you're not on mute. Oh, sorry. That, that's okay. The, the grade pretty much rolls down from the student entrance toward those practice fields on the upper part of the slide. So we're working out the grades now, but the, the, uh, the, the goal here is to maintain that open space that currently is located, uh, occupied by the tennis courts um, and, and probably put some plantings around the, uh, uh, the auditorium there, um, just trying to let the, uh, the pool will hold its own, but that will, will stay in the green space. Hey, and, and Keith, that really will become an extension of that fitness and wellness center. So as the doors open up on that end of the building, and you wanted to do some act outside agility drills uh, associated with the weight room or fitness and training. Uh, I think that's a perfect opportunity to do that. And that space will be perfect there. One of the things I do want to point out that I, from a safety and security um, perspective, is that currently our students are, I, I can't put a mouse on the show, but our, our students are down there where the track is placed right there for the weight room. So they actually go down there for class. Um, what this does is it brings our, all of our student body um, up to the building. And that way, from a safety and security standpoint, it just it's just very helpful and, and it's the right thing to do. Um, so for drills, lockdown drills, all the different scenarios that you can think of, um, our students are readily accessible to us and, you know, it gives us the ability to respond faster. Um, so that is just a, a very solid thing that, you know, we appreciate about the design that they have. Mr. Cox, Nathan Smith approves. He thinks it looks great. He's watching with mom. Nathan, we will not put any Ohio State stuff in, in here, Nathan. <laughs> I just want you to know that. And um, fellas, uh, 
I, I do want to say this uh, with Jumper Carter Cease. Um, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to pay for this comment, but it's worth it. If you impress Miss Busby, you have done job well done, fellas. Job well done. I've yet to impress her. So good job. Does anybody else have any comments or feedback that they would like to add? Um, I'm going to send out the Google form in our weekly messenger and we will post, I think we're going to get the recording again of this. Um, we did post the original or the first community meeting on the um, school website. So we will do that again. And um, so we'll post the form there as well as the recording. And that's Mr. Lambert's question. We are going to post all that Mr. Lambert for you. And to respond to, I believe Ms. Morgan's question, the barbed wire around the athletic fencing, when the new fencing is placed, it will not have the barbed wire around the top. Is that correct? That, that is. And, and actually, all the fencing on campus will be replaced uh, you know, throughout the okay. entire campus uh, so we can reestablish the security points as well. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay, well, we got the ghoul form out there, Keith. If we get collect any more, um, you know, we will definitely let you know. And I, for one, just really appreciate um, the process so far. You guys have been outstanding to work with. It's been very fluid at this point. So we appreciate it. We love the progress, and we're excited to get it started. We appreciate it and appreciate the opportunity, number one. And number two, we're just glad to be part of such a good team. It's a total team effort, and, and you'll see it all the way through construction. Uh, the, the district has uh, assembled quite the team, and we're just excited to be a part of it and, and appreciate the opportunity. So um, we'll continue to push it and, and get it dialed in. We'll just This is one opportunity the district has to get it right, and, and we want it right. So we'll... Uh, keep the uh, close communication and um, do our best to uh, get the district exactly what they need. Uh, we appreciate it. Keith, I guess we'll close on this. And this is, I knew this was going to come up. I should have asked that earlier. Um, when I've learned some new words throughout this process, the phasing plan, um, will we make that? How does that work as far as um, communicating that to the community? I know, I know what we've been doing, but as far as establishing timelines, how, how does that, how do we go about presenting that stuff? We let people know kind of the progression of what we're doing. Yeah, the, the phasing plan, as we've, uh, of course, had your input and we'll continue to developing. Uh, we're develop, developing it um, along with the, the construction input um, start next summer and we'll go through the following two summers. So it's about a two and a half year project, but the phasing itself, uh, we develop that as a guide so that we can follow code compliant inspections and gradually open the school as we go. Um, and we can um, share that at some point, uh, uh, Chad. Uh, we try to get it as close as we can. Uh, the sprinkler system drives the train and the fire alarm. Uh, and then once construction starts, the contractor will, um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit flexible. Uh, right now, we haven't included any of the uh, uh, the outdoor athletic events. Uh, once the uh, uh, new addition is completed and we can relocate all of the uh, equipment out of the field house, that will open up a, a uh, area for all of the athletics. But uh, Really, the athletic events and all will be coordinated very closely with the, uh, the district and the school staff just from a scheduling standpoint. And then when the contractor, uh, they will work up their own schedule that will be in a lot more detail. And that in itself will also be will stay and be closely coordinated with, uh, with the, the district and, um, and your staff as well and, and, and the, the AD. Um, so... Um, and the answer to your question is we can share that. Uh, we would like to get a little bit farther developed, which means we need to get some input from OFF, well, which is the state uh, code agency, to be sure they're on board with everything. Uh, and then, then we can put it out, uh, probably the better time to, to put that out, Chad, or be able to share that. 
Okay, and I forgot to ask um, Mr. Marshall, Mr. Odding, do y'all have anything to share or add or anything that we need to say? No, I think the presentation was accurate and the schedule, we're, we're, we agree with that. No, I, I was just going to say that we can, um, it'll be good once they get the uh, timeline down to share that and we'll put that, you know, so you can send it out and we'll put it on our district website as well. Okay. And Mr. Geyer, do you have, Colonel Geyer, do you have anything to add or anything to share? It's okay if you don't. He's good. All right. Well, Keith, I think that is it. Um, if anybody else has anything, you know how to reach out to us. And I really am impressed with the turnout tonight. I really appreciate you guys coming out. And um, we got a very diverse sampling of our population here tonight. A lot of staff, a lot of parents, just community members. So I appreciate that. And thank you all for coming tonight. Great. Right. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Everyone have a good evening. Appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good meeting, Keith. Appreciate it, y'all. We'll see some of y'all soon, like in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, see you Thursday. <laughs>